what's interesting about Black Ops 3, and which is almost basically exclusive to this title, you know, it's different than any of the other Call of Duty's that we've seen in the past, in terms of how you can rank up and what you can actually use within the realm, within the environment of the game, is the new innovation of the specialist that they've actually introduced into the game. So before you start out, you know, you get your score streaks, you get your creative classes, and you know, in competitive you can ban or protect stuff, that's all fine and dandy. But within that subsection of, you know, Call of Duty is now specialists, which basically have, as the name, you know, entails, special abilities. So now you can choose between a variety of specialists. I believe there's a total of nine or so. So you've got nine classes, each having two different specialties. So 18 abilities in total that each do their own unique thing, which makes, you know, choosing which one sort of relatively important in terms of what impact you're trying to have on the game, which is why I think this Call of Duty may have the greatest competitive skill gap in terms of who's able to pick up the game, you know, which teams do well and which teams stay at the top for the longest amounts of time. You know, among the pro scene, even in Advanced Warfare, it seemed like there was a pretty high skill gap between the teams that were at the top, so Optic, Phase, Denial, those three teams are basically the top three throughout the duration of the game, and that was Advanced Warfare where people thought the game was so inconsistent. So if you look at a game now like Black Ops 3 where there's entirely different strategies and subsects, there could, I mean, this game could be the most consistent game in terms of placing if one team is just leaps and bounds above every other team, or it could be the most, you know, the most swing-worthy game, sorry, like a flash of light just came right through the window, but it could be the almost the swingiest game in a sense because if anyone on a given day can come out with a new, a new unique strategy that doesn't get banned out, and they can implement it properly and effectively within the setting of a tournament within the environment, then they can easily snowball and people won't be able to you know create a response to that strategy unless they're completely out just kill, out slaying or outperforming the other team. Where you know if you select these uh, specialists appropriately and you have a strategy in mind when it comes to you know how you choose them, then you could probably actually implement them in a way in which you can really press an, pressure an advantage that. The other team might not have known that that it might have existed. So, going right into it, I want to talk about you know the highest priority specialist picks in Black Ops Three. Um, I would talk about you know the bands of protection total and what's the highest priority, but they're still being things flushed out. You know, maybe there's going to be some uh, patches in terms of the weapons that are still in the game. Maybe there's going to be uh, changes to the maps. We don't even know the map sets, so we don't know what guns could probably be useful. The rule sets are still being implemented. Some specialists may be completely removed, score streaks, etc. So the reason why I'm just, you know, making it exclusive to specialists is because we can look in within this tier and see what's the most valuable in terms of what its potential use could be. So uh, starting right away, I'll just list all the specials and go through each of their abilities, what they, you know, what they can bring to the table, what they offer up, and then I'll, you know, sort of comprise my, I guess, top specialist picks and all of advanced, uh, not advanced warfare, of all of Black Ops 3, so we can sort of set a priority chart. So in terms of what game mode you're playing, in terms of what gun you might be using, what type of playstyle you're trying to emulate, what's going to be the most useful specialist, and in turn we can figure out you know, what you're going to be able to abuse and use in terms of the specialist. So great, getting right into it, the first one is the Ruin. Obviously you have the Gravity Spikes and Overdrive. The Overdrive seems to be terrific for ob objective-minded players on, let's say, an uplink game mode where you need those extra boosts, those extra few seconds can cost your team, or win your team the game or lose your team the game. If you can Overdrive, double jump boost into the portal with the ball, you get those, double po those two points instead of the one. So. Overdrive is useful in that sense. You can get around the map faster. S and D rushes, gravity spikes that are really useful for breaking hills on hardpoint or getting those quick panic kills where you know you should lose the gunfight. Really, it's just a ridiculous panic knife in a sense. But that's what that's used for. Uh, the ruins. It's it's the first one you unlock. So uh, the first uh, the lowest level specialist. That's what you get in pubs, or at least right off right off the bat. And I'm sorry if you hear my computer fan going off, guys kind of happens whenever you're recording a video but the next is the outrider so this one you get the sparrow which is the bow and arrow which does a lot of damage surprisingly and you have the vision pulse i think the vision pulse even in pubs is a little weak even though it's an instant uav you know i've, I've used it a, a couple times and you know there's a, there's a statistic that they provide for you that the uh within the actual barracks that you can see how many kills you're getting with each specialist and for me outrider whenever i use the vision pulse section of it I get less than a kill per every time I use it, which means 
every time it's active, I get less than a kill, which basically means it's almost useless when it, when I compare it to even the spare within the same specialist tier. So, you know, in a competitive setting, Vision Pulse isn't probably going to be used because teams already have massive communication. You know, uh, anyways, they always are on top of where everybody's at in terms of who's on the map at what time, who's alive, who's dead. Vision Pulse will provide one moment. It's like a lightning strike ping, but anyways... You know, it's if if you probably if you relied on that ping to win the game, anyways, you probably weren't going to win as a team in general. So, that being said, uh, the vision pulse isn't that good. That's what I'm going to take away from that. Uh, the prophet is the next, the tempest. Um, I think this got a little nerfed from the previous you know beta when I played it, so I think it's gotten worse. But overall, it's still pretty effective in terms of what it's used for. You can get a couple quick kills by spraying this electric laser into people, and then it somehow transfers over to the people who are really close by. I don't think it's going to be too useful. I think it's nerfed. I don't think it's as powerful as maybe like something like a scythe, which we'll get get into later. So the temp is sort of weak right now. The glitch, though, you saw like Karma get this ridiculous 1v2 outplay on Redwood s and I mean, it's great for those types of things. It's very, it's a niche pick. You're not going to be using it in every game mode. It's not going to be a hard point thing where you get one individual outplay and it's not going to completely change the game in terms of, you know, you were losing 100 by 100 points and now that one kill changed everything. I mean, you have to be more consistent than that. You know, specialists in my eyes, you're supposed to be using them in bursts, right? If you get a specialist thing, it should help you in a massive way. It should be like, okay guys, I got my war machine. We can break this hill now. It should have an impact within the game in a massive sort of a sense. So in S&D, there's a great potential for that to happen, and I've seen that potential happen. Within a respawn, glitch is almost unusable in terms of like you know the other priorities, which are much higher up on the table. Um, the next one, battery. Uh, you get the war machine. Obviously, this is the new tube. I mean, it's OP if you are even if you are using flat track, it just slices right through it. Then you get kinetic armor. This gives you a little bit of health. Um, even compare like if you had some guy with a war machine killing a guy with kinetic armor and they're both using the specialist i think the guy with the war machine wins so but in that within that specialist tier alone war machine is better than kinetic armor it has a greater impact and so war machine in a sense is going to be great for breaking hills on hard point but nothing really else maybe checking corners and that sort of thing but you have to use it effectively in burst otherwise you're just gonna be spamming a noob tube for two or three you know seconds and then it's gone i mean I don't think it's going to be that high of a priority uh, in other game modes other than Hardpoint. That being said, the next specialist is, I believe, the Seraph. So, you know, this is the one where you get the Annihilator pistol and you got Combat Focus. No one's going to be using Combat Focus. You know, it's like Hardline, and no one used Hardline competitive in the previous cut, so I don't see why they would do, do that now. Even if, you know, Score Streaks were effective, I don't think they would be using them. But because of the fact that Score Streaks really aren't effective, unless you're getting those really high up Score Streaks, like the Hater, you know, the VSAT, that's what I like to call it, the VSAT, but it's really the Hater. Um, there's like the Mothership that's super high up. The Hellstorm is god off. The Lightning Strike is inconsistent. So the Kill Streaks aren't really a big factor within this game, so Combat Focus isn't going to be a necessity in my in my eyes but the annihilator i could see this being a niche pick for like if you're using a sniper class and you just want a quick pistol swap other than that though i think it's just like a weaker version of some of the other you know kill orientated uh specialist perks but the next tier is no is the nomad so you've got the hive and you've got reject reject in my eyes i th think this might be one of the most ba it might be like more balanced i think they you know fixed it i think it's balanced now Previously, I had thought reject was really strong because you know you instantly spawn back up, and you don't instantly spawn back up when you use this thing. You also get to decide if you want to or not. So, if you don't decide to spawn back up, you lose half your bar and momentum. Anyways, I think that's a fair way of balancing that. You're not constantly getting to choose. You know, instantly. You know, you sometimes if you use reject, you'll die twice in a row because you spawn and you spawn in the same exact spot. So they're just gonna be aiming at it. Um. I don't think it's going to be as big of a priority as I once had thought. You know, I think even glitch in like a SND type game mode might be might overtake reject, but we'll have to see. I don't think it's going to be that high of a priority though. Um, Hive, I haven't actually used this. I've only seen it used against me. It's basically like a ridiculous claymore in my eyes. And you know, you have these pods that are stuck on various surfaces in the game. You just can look out for them, and if you break them or like toss an EMP or something. I'm not sure if that disables it, but I feel like there's ways to counter Hive, so the Nomad Specialist might not be as powerful as people had once speculated, speculated it to be. And guys, by the way, I'm doing this all based on my experience within the game, and also from what I've seen, I'm not just you know going on this tangent, 
on just random thoughts that I might have. I've actually, you know, experienced. I've I'm already second prestige in this game, so I've actually, you know, put in the hours. I'm trying to get the nuclear. I died one off, guys. I died one off. I'm so sad about that. But the next specialist streak, the tier, whatever, is the Reaper. This might be the actual best tier. I mean, the best streak, whatever. This best specialist class that you want to call it. Um, the 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 offensive one is a scythe. It's basically like a, a minigun, a death, a death machine, and it almost has no recoil. And if you if you're accurate and you hit your first couple shots, there's literally literally nothing no anyone can do to you. If you miss your f f first few shots, you're gonna die anyways. And that's you know the same thing with any gun that you use. If you miss your shots, you're probably not gonna win the gunfight. But if you hit your shots with this thing, you will, you probably will be melting people. And I've seen, I've even gotten some ridiculous feeds with this thing. You know. I get split so often, but when I don't get split, you can see like how powerful the minigun is. It does a lot of damage in a short amount of time. Even the psychosis, if you're looking at that, it might be super useful for anchors. And the way it works is, you know, it creates clones of yourself and it, you know, they sort of move around the map. It's like if you play League of Legends, it's like LeBlanc's passive where if you're super one, if, if she's super weak, a, a passive clone will come out and you'll try to distract the enemy. It's like that. You have three clones that come out and they walk around the map. They all look like you because you're all colored the same. And, you know, they start shooting at them and you can, you know, use them as, you know, distractors or a way to get away or escape. Or you can also use it to engage because there's three of you and they don't know who to shoot at. And now you got a better opportunity to win the gunfight. So I think psychosis is underrated, actually. I think because you also get it really fast. There's a very short, you know, cooldown on it. You can rack up the points for the specialist really quickly for whatever reason with psychosis. So I think its effectiveness, maybe even at a hard point or... You know, an uplink would be really, you know, undervalued, I think. So that'll be a nice a little thing right there. Spectre, Ripper, and Active Camo. And Active Camo is the Invis thing. Uh, I could see that being used in S and D, but the Ripper with the knifing, I don't. It's such a niche like strategy that like you may see it once or twice in all of competitive Black Ops Three, but it's not going to be a main strategy that's used. I feel like it's easily countered. You know, people going melee range. You probably can, you know, do see what you have to do to counter them. Just sit far back, right, with your AR. And if there's a map that doesn't permit the Spectre to be used and the Ripper just doesn't fit that meta, you can crush those teams who try to, you know, cheese you or something like that. So overall, I don't think the Spectre is going to be used too much. Not not a high priority. And the final one, the Fire Break. This is an interesting one. You know, I've just started using the Fire Break. You know, the Pure Fire. I got my ridiculous clip. You guys saw that on my personal channel, my six on with the Pure Fire. So. You may be thinking it's overpowered, and I think there's a fair way to counter this thing. And the main drawback of the Purifier, so this is the um, offensive one, offensive uh, ability within this set, is the fact that the range on the Flamethrower isn't as long as you maybe think it would be. So in situations where there's even mid to long, mid short to mid range engagements, you will barely be touching the guy. And you know you may think, okay, well all you have to do is touch the guy once. But if you can't touch the guy once and they start shooting you, your crosshair is going to be bouncing up and down anyways. You're not going to hit that guy for the life of you. So in a competitive setting, I think the purifier might be actually weaker. In pubs, when players aren't actually you know accurate all the time, they're not going to be able to hit you. I think you have a massive chance at you know making this thing and abusing this thing in the pub sense. But that's pubs, guys. I'm trying to you know put this in the competitive perspective as well. Pure fire is probably not going to be as viable as you might think, but it's going to be useful in certain hard points and certain hills. And if that's how teams decide to use it, then there's going to be that aspect. You're going to have to watch out for it. You're going to have to, you know, set up hives or, you know, EMP that guy or something. But I just don't think, as a general specialist, it's not going to be as applicable to every game mode as maybe a, something like a, a scythe would be. Because I think a scythe, that's like if I just want to, you know, give you guys my top specialist right now. I think the Scythe is the best specialist in the game. I, maybe a lot of people would agree or disagree with this, but that's my opinion. You can use it in any game with hard point, especially you just mow people down if you have a nice spawn trap going. Uplink as well. You can cut through the armor of the ball carrier and start shooting down the airs or camping at the back. S and D, it's just great for getting picks and long range engagements. It's it's so good, guys. Yeah, the Scythe is really good. So uh, before I forget, you know, the firebreak also has its you know heat wave of special ability which you know emit like emits uh it's like a heat blast you know it stuns the enemy and destroys hostile equipment within the range it's gonna be a pub thing i'm not gonna really see it in competitive unless it's like a a strategy for like breaking a hard point or uh 
breaking a certain part of an S and D map. So if you're trying to break into a, I don't know what the bomb sites are. I haven't played S and D in this game yet. So if you're going on Redwood and there's the little building, the Outlook building in the middle of the map, uh, and you want to break there, you can probably activate that within the building, have an impact somehow. You know, stun the enemies that are nearby. But overall, I don't think that'll be used too much. So if I want to list off the top specials in order. At least you know in terms of like relative you know use i think the scythe is that the, so the reaper will be at the top of the tier because of scythe and then secondary because of psychosis those two really are good like i think the psychosis is underrated the scythe is probably not underrated people love using this thing in pubs from what i've seen but it's not like it's not ner like it's really strong right now so it's going to be heavily banned or protected we'll see a lot of gameplay with the scythe um I don't think the Spectre is going to be used too much, you know, like I said, the Purifier might be used in these niche circumstances, but I think, you know, the secondary, like the best thing that you want to use after that is probably going to be um, Gravity Spikes, which is interesting to me because that's not something that I use the most, like I my second most used, like my first most used is the Scythe, then is the Tempest, then is probably the Purifier now, and maybe like the uh, Sparrow and that sort of thing, that, you know, those offensive ones afterwards, but the gravity spikes might have more utility based on what they're good for because they can instantly clear a room and so i think these things will just be placed higher i've already seen these things banned and protected in multiple competitive scrims and matches that i've seen so i think gravity spikes are going to be good and because you know the ruin tier as well the specialist also has overdrive it's going to be i think this tier if you, i don't know if you can ban uh, specific abilities or if you can ban the entire specialist if, I think it's specific abilities, but both of them are really useful. The overdrive, if you want to use them in uplink and S&D, are going to be very helpful. Even in hardpoint, if you want to get to hills faster, get rotations, you know, you swap to that really quickly, hop it on, you have a really good shot at breaking the hill, catch, catch a person off guard, that sort of thing. Outrider, I think the Sparrow might be useful in like an S&D setting, but overall, I think it's not going to be as high of a priority. It's, I'm not, I don't think it's ever going to be banned or protected, really. It's just going to be something where if something else is banned or protected that you have to fall back to, it's a, it's a middling sort of specialist. It's not going to be the highest priority. So I think instead of that, instead of the Tempest, instead of that, the Sparrow, it's going to be the War Machine third. This thing you could just spam, 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 spam. And when you're done spamming, you just spam a little more until the game just implodes and your disc crashes and your Xbox gets turned off. Your you know university throws you out and throws you out on the streets because guess what, guys? You crashed the internet because of the, the amount of shit you put the enemy team through, which forced them to DDoS you because you're using this war machine. It's OP. This needs to be like toned back just a little bit. I'm not quite sure on the balancing how that works, what the exact stats and metrics are and how they've already balanced it in the current state of the game. As I'm recording this, it's the 11th of November, so there's still a lot up in the air. Things can change. Patches are going to come through. They will. They should, really, in terms of what can be changed with some of the specialists that exist right now, because let's be honest, guys, the scythe is so OP. But I think the War Machine is, is the third best. Um... From there, it's really a toss-up. I don't think this other specialists are that OP is like in terms of their inherent abilities. I think you may even put like something like a a rejack or a glitch at fourth or fifth. Like from that point onwards, like from those top three, so the gravity, so in the order of the scythe, the gravity spikes and war machine. From that point onwards, everything else seems to be relatively you know manageable. You can counter it in some sort of way. There's a certain negative aspect to it, whereas What's the negative aspect of the scythe? It lasts for super long. You can spam it forever because it's got so many bullets. You never have to, you know, run out because you don't have enough shots left. You spam it. You don't have any recoil. You get a lot of kills in any game mode. If you look at the war machine, you can, you know, use it to break uh, break kills easily. It cuts through flag jacket. No, nothing really counters it. You can use it to break corners. You can to check corners. You can use it just to win a simple one on one gunfight by, you know, hitting them just point blank. If you ever. Uh, you know, nuke tube somebody in MW2 when you hit them point blank, you know, it bounces off them and then it still goes off. So that's strong gravity spikes as well, breaking hills. I mean, I think people are going to be looking at all these streaks in the perspective of respawns. And that's probably for the best because you're going to be playing more respawns on S&Ds anyways. 
but they also have great utility within SMD. Like imagine somebody's trying to defuse a bomb site. All you have to do with the gravity spikes is jump out there in the middle of the map and then just spike down. And guess what? You clear the hard point or the SMD bomb site area. There's so much utility for these three specialists that those can be the highest priority. So if you guys have played Black Ops 3, let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on what the highest priority specialists are. You know, like I said, mine are the scythe, the war machine, and the gravity spikes. Just those three are just super ridiculous. If you want to, you know, have a good time in pubs, use those three. Or if you want to play competitively, you also use those three. Because guess what, guys? Nothing can really combat these things right now in the current state of the game. So, if you guys did enjoy this video, please drop a like down below. It's been Nuxter. Take it easy, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.